going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much uh, for joining in and giving us those technical picks. But we have FMCG companies which have been dealing with what is a tough environment. However, with the good monsoon and the arrival of the festive season, let's uh, take a quick check on the demand outlook and the triggers for growth. We have Mr. Sunil Dugal, the CEO of Dabar, who's joining in to give us a status check on what's going on. Mr. Dugal, hi. Thank you very much for taking the time out. So that exactly is the big question. Good monsoons have come through. It's been a normal monsoon after two consecutive. Have volumes kept picked up as compared to the consolidated blended 8% that you did in Q1? Well, we are seeing a little bit of uptick in terms of demand uh, as we speak. It's picking up a uh, little bit. And we do expect a good third quarter on the back of uh, several uh, um, tailwinds in terms of the festive season, hopefully a, a, a more severe winter and also the marriage season, etc. So there are a whole lot of things coming together, so we do expect a good uh, third quarter. Now having said that, the sustainability of this demand uptake is still questionable and we have no assurance really that uh, going forward in the fourth quarter and beyond, the demand uh, uptake would continue or whether it would taper down because there is no fresh stimulus happening other than what we've already seen. Hmm. So if you had to talk about blended volumes that you could expect possibly in the coming quarters and we're not going to you know, dwell too much on Q2 because obviously you're going to go into your silent period as well. But if you had to end the year with a certain volume growth in mind, what would it be cumulatively? And if you talk about Q3 compared to Q1, uh, what might the numbers look like? Well, uh, Q3 should certainly be better than Q1. Q1, I think, was uh, really where we bottomed out and uh, going forward, things should look better. How much better, it's hard to say. For the full year, we would look at a blended volume growth in the region of 5 to 8 percent, maybe 5 to 7 percent, which is uh, pretty moderate. But having said that, we do expect the volume growths to pick up and perhaps uh, significantly pick up if there is another good monsoon towards the end of next, uh, next uh, calendar year. Right. Mr. Dugal, uh, good morning, sir. Prashant also joining in. Good morning. Could you uh, kind of tell us which are the, what are the dominating drivers? I mean, uh, when, when you're looking at the business and running the company, which is, what are the big drivers on your mind? Uh, drivers, levers, whatever you want to call it, uh, which are at play, yeah. which are impacting the business? With the, yeah. Yeah. the drivers change with changing circumstances and the environment. At that, this point in time, actually, the more discretionary parts of our portfolio seem to be performing well and we are investing behind them. So the beverage piece, uh, things like skin care and home care seem to be on an uptrend. The base staples, which are very rural focus, etc., still seem to be very sluggish. So the investments are tapering towards the more discretionary end of the portfolio, which is a little bit unusual, but that's the way things are at this point in time. Uh, and, and how does the discretionary, what, were you, what you would term as discretionary in the base staples, how would it break up for Dabur? And can the pickup and discretionary well, make up for the slack in the staples? Yeah. Not fully, because the discretionary part is perhaps around 40%, 60% remains the staples component. So we, we need both actually to drive growth in a significant manner. At that, this point in time, we could probably see close to double digit growth in the discretionary part, but still in the mid uh, single digits or even the low single digits in the, in the staples part. So the blended growth should be in the region of 5 to 7% for the year. Mm. What about your oral product segment, uh, Mr. Dugal? Because that really outperformed in the previous segment. I mean, in the previous quarter, I think it was double-digit growth of around 10 to 12 odd percent. Um, there's fierce competition coming in, especially when you talk about the Ayurvedic as well as slash herbal segment. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing to augment that space? And how much of an incremental growth do you expect within the oral uh, healthcare space? Any new launches as well? Well, see in the context of oral care, uh, where the growth is practically nil uh, in terms of volumes for the category as a whole, under these circumstances, growing, uh, growing, growing in the double digits is pretty satisfactory and we will be very happy to continue that path. It's going to be hard to work going forward because uh, the, the tepid growth in terms of category for the last several quarters do take a toll ultimately. But I think uh, we should be able to maintain close to double digit growth in the next few quarters and hopefully then trend ahead of that uh, with new launches, etc., which could come in the next six months. Mr. Dugul, uh, you know, I'm going to read out what Morgan Stanley analysts who cover the staple sector put out in a note recently, a few days back. And I quote, over the past 15 years, consumer staples have benefited from distribution expansion and improved brand accessibility. However, with a mere 4% aggregate revenue growth in financial year 16, lower since financial year 0,
3 and markedly low elasticity to, elasticity to increased advertisement spends, it appears that uh, companies ha may have plucked the low hanging fruit and will have now to strive to penetrate the lower income groups. Uh, they are painting a pretty uh, sort of grim picture in terms of what companies like you can do mm -hmm. in the future. They are saying the low hanging fruit is gone. How would you like to respond to this sir? Well, the low hanging fruit in terms of distribution expansion uh, definitely has gone. Now many of these categories are in 80s and 90s in terms of percentage, uh, the penetration, which is about the ceiling which we can get to. But the consumption density still remains low, the premiumization agenda still has to play out. So I think there's a lot of juice left in the sector. I don't think uh, in, any, in any way it is uh, tapering off or plateauing. There could be a period, uh, let, let's say the last one year has been pretty tepid, the next few quarters may be also not very exciting. But the long term outlook is excellent, I don't think there's any doubt about it. The income levels are still rising and that will fuel growth at least for the next 5 to 10 years in a, in a significant manner. There have to be outside triggers, there has to be a reasonably good monsoon, there has to be some economic stimuli to drive the whole consumption space. But if that happens, the staples outlook I think is very positive. About the point about elasticity to advertising spends now, uh, you know, sort of going down, how would you react to that? Is that happening?